This is the plan that I have repeatedly warned about to take the tools of oppression used to tackle the coronavirus and use them all, lockdowns, forced business closures, exclusion zones, isolation. We heard, we heard Angela Marsden earlier, businesses shut down, isolation at home, all of that, all of those measures, including destroying private property rights and private income in order to tackle the climate crisis. Now is a historical moment, a time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. Rebalancing investment, harnessing science and technology, and advancing the transition to net zero emissions, all elements of the Great Reset, are fundamental to building the future we need. And that last one was the clown Guterres, who was at the Climate Ambition Summit, telling us the world is going to cook by three and a half degrees or something by the end of the century. Yeah, right. This Great Reset is as serious and as dangerous a threat to our prosperity, to your prosperity and your freedom, as we have faced in decades. With these powerful bodies, including the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund and even Prince Charles boasting, yes, boasting that within a, few, within a few short years, yes, their words, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Remember, this is not me saying this, this is them. They are even running ads for the Great Reset. A handful of countries will dominate. I wonder which ones they might be. A terrifying coalition of big business, big tech and left-wing totalitarians are so confident and so brazen. I mean, they just stole the US election, so I guess they're feeling pretty chuffed with themselves that they are now promising you will own nothing and you will be happy. What they should have added is, added is, and we, the very rich, will own everything and be even happier. Of course they will. The great tragedy here is that Prince Charles is involved in this fascist corporatist global push and is thereby putting our entire constitutional monarchy at risk. Queen Elizabeth, please give the bloke the punt. It is critical and I urge you to write to your MPs over the holidays to insist that no Australian public servant or member of parliament, no individual on the Australian public purse attends the World Economic Forum in Lucerne in May, which is where this obscenity is scheduled to begin. Please write to your MPs and tell them. And you think I'm just imagining this stuff? Crazy old Rowan with his conspiracy theories? Think again. This garbage is already deeply embedded into our state and federal governments. I've spoken before about the insidious phrase build back better, which sounds like common sense, but is in fact just one of several slogans for the Great Reset. Another being the Orwellian phrase, the fourth industrial revolution. Here's old Klaus again, minus the white cat on his knee, telling us all about the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution will impact our lives completely. It will not only change how we communicate, how we produce, how we consume, it will change actually us, our own identity, which of course gives life uh, to such uh, policies and uh, developments like uh, smart traffic, smart government, smart cities. What we will see is that uh, everything will be integrated into a ecosystem driven by big data and uh, driven uh, particularly by close cooperation also of governments uh, with um, uh, business, civil society. And this revolution will come at a breathtaking speed. It will be like a tsunami. Like a tsunami in the fourth industrial revolution, you will own nothing, but you will be happy. That is an order. 
It gets worse. The World Economic Forum are now blatantly saying capitalism needs a dose of Marxism. As I say, it's not like they're hiding their sinister intentions. Indeed, I was horrified when an outsider fan last week sent me this document from the Australian government. Quote, preparing for the future, industry 4.0 test labs in Australia, a strategic initiative of the Prime Minister's industry 4.0 task force. Section 1, significance of the fourth industrial revolution. Unbelievable. So, may I respectfully remind the Prime Minister there is nothing in the Great Reset that is in Australia's national interest. Australians did not vote for a dose of Marxism in our capitalism. Speaking of Marxists, on this show this year, we also brought Dan Andrews' insidious Belt and Road dealings with Communist China to national attention thanks to my exclusive interview with US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, which led, as I predicted last week, to the passing of the government's foreign relation relations bill. Again, congratulations to the Prime Minister and the government for that one important piece of legislation. If the Prime Minister is true to, true to his words and only listens and answers to the quiet Australians who elected him, then he can comfortably look forward to re-election, possibly even next year. But if he is seduced by the siren voices of the virtue signalers of the international forums, of the global warming alarmists and their doomsday predictions of the greedy renewable investors within his own party who fraudulently claim that they are saving the planet when all they are doing is enriching themselves at the expense of the poorest among us. Indeed, if he puts the interests of the elites over the basic everyday interests of the average Aussie, it will not end well. But I am an opti optimist and I believe Mr Morrison understands that Australia rejects the reset. It's at the end what, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital and our biological identities. No, mate, not in Australia, it won't. Rack off, Klaus.